So Bitwig 5.1 has some new audio features and I want to talk about this in this video and I have prepared here some kind of classic drum loop. And if we want to use this as an example, you can see I don't know the BPM or the tempo of this clip. I don't know if this is a loop or not. Um, it's probably not normalized. So uh, we want to use this pretty wonky drum loop um, to show some examples. So here, first, when you import a WAV file or audio loop inside of Bitwig Studio, you have usually on the left side some kind of stretch mode already defined. It's the default stretch mode. For me, it's raw. Uh, and you have to select, your, of course, the audio clip to see this. So you can see mode raw. Uh, but you can change default stretch mode by going into the settings here uh, and then behavior. Default stretch mode, long samples raw, short samples raw, on record bounce, stretch HD. And you don't need to change this. I just want to show you this, that you can change it here. And it depends on how you use Bitwig Studio, what kind of music you do, and what kind of samples you use most of the times. So for me, it's raw. It's basically unstretched. But you can change it here to all kinds of different stretch modes we, uh, stretch modes we have inside of Bitwig Studio. OK, so this is now raw. And we want to fit this to our tempo, to our project tempo, which is the default BPM here, 110 ppm. And we go into the detail editor of uh, the audio clip here. We can do this by maybe double clicking to see it in the bottom half. Or we can use shift tab, or for me it's actually just tab while selecting this here. And I go into this detail editor or you can use down here. You can switch from arrange to edit You can see here everything in detail, right? So now that we are in this audio clip here, you can see we have audio events selected and this is only one audio event in this audio clip. You can have multiple audio events in one audio clip. This is kind of special, I think, I think inside of Bitwig. Uh, but here we have just one audio clip. So uh, also on the top, you can see some triangles here in blue, which basically are the markers for the onset detection or the transients. So every time you drag in an audio file into Bitwig, uh, it tries to find transients and mark them with these triangles or with these onsets. You can also switch here to onsets to, to see that better. Um, you can see the triangles are now bigger and we have this line here to see where the transients are. We also have here different intensity of the color, right? We have a deep blue, we have a lighter blue and then your mostly opaque uh, blue. Uh, and this kind of marks the intensity of the sound, right? The kick drum is probably the loudest then the snare drum is a bit quieter and then the hi-hat is almost um, super quiet. So um, that's, that's what you can see here with these kind of uh, uh, brightness levels. You can also select these um, onset markers here and can head over to the left side in the inspector and can see here the intensity is 7%. You can also see here the position inside of the wave file or the wave clip or the audio event, however you want to call it. Uh, this audio, uh, this onset marker here is 26% and this one has 69% so it's the kick drum is probably the loudest one. So what we want to do is we want to find out the BPM of this and we want to do this by using the DJ method right you find the first kick drum inside of your uh, vinyl record so we head over here and right click on this onset and say set clip start. And now it switches basically the first onset, which is the first kick drum to the beginning of this audio clip. It doesn't actually cut here this offset or this padding of this WAV file. And this is a problem, I think, and it needs to change in the future versions maybe. Uh, in Able Live, it's like this when you click right or uh, right click on this and you can say uh, warp from here or start clip from here or something like that. And it basically takes this beginning now here as an kind of an yeah root or as an kind of reference point for everything that you do to the wave file so when i change here the bpm of this or maybe i have to change here also the, the stretch mode first so we use a stretch mode slice here slice is perfect for drums it's the same um algorithm like beats like you if you come from Ableton Live, it's the same thing as Beats. It tries to preserve the transients. Uh, so Slice is perfect for drums. We, we use that. 
And when we change now the tempo, you can also ch only change the tempo when you choose a stretch mode, of course. So it takes the tempo 110 ppm, which is basically just the project tempo because Bitwig doesn't know anything about the BPM of this uh, wave file or of this drum loop. And it, there's also no uh, automatic beat BPM detection inside of Bitwig Studio. So we have to do this for ourselves. So here it's, uh, it's, it's chosen 110 ppm. And when we change this, you can see um, the clip or the audio event becomes longer or shorter, depending on what kind of B BPM we are choosing here. But you can also see the initial kick drum moves actually away from the beginning of the clip. We can still right click here and say clip start and it moves it back here to the beginning. But every time we change the BPM here, it changes the whole offset with kind of is, is is not what we want. We want to have the kick drum stay in place here at the beginning. And what you can do to change this, actually right click here, say set clip start and then remove the padding. And now you can change the BPM and the kick drum stays in place. And it's now our new reference point, which makes it much easier to find out the BPM. So now we can say we want to just use one bar here. This is one bar right inside of our 110 BPM project. And we can now change the BPM of this until we fit maybe the whole uh, thing in there. Um, it could be that when you import here a drum loop, um, that the drum loop actually is not cut exactly on the BPM of this drum loop itself. So maybe you have a kick snare, kick, and then the next snare is missing, right? So you have to find this out. So here's a kick snare, kick snare it's basically two bars or um two uh two halves uh, of, a, of a bar uh, okay so now we can fit this here into one bar so let's listen to that maybe go back here and also loop this so it already fits so it's probably 87 bpm that's the BPM of the original drum loop. And we can now change the tempo of, B of Bitwig Studio and this track stays in place, stays exactly in one bar and changes how it sounds. And when you put this tempo here pretty much to 20 BPM. You can see here, some of these samples are not that long, right? So Bitwig tries to fake here the tails and you can change this here in the slicing mode, at least with the tail setting. So we change this to none. So now there's no tail. It just plays or slices these uh, individual single hits and then plays these hits in its original tempo. Um, but then it becomes shorter because we have now 21 BPM here. So there's a lot of space in between the beats, right? So there's something missing. And with the tail setting, we can say what Bitwig uh, should do to actually fill that space. We can use ping pong, which is basically just using the last bit of this sample and play it back, back and forth until the space is filled. Right, you can hear it playing, playing it back and forth. Or you can use granular. And with the format, you can change the setting of the granular setting. Um, so it the tail basically tries to fill the space when there is a gap, when you pull the BPM down and there's space between the, uh, the onsets or the slices. Um, okay, maybe bring this back here to 87. We can also now with the slice mode, we can head down here to the pitch setting and can change the pitch. So again here, there is the tail setting important when we put this to none and pitch it up. Um, Bitwig basically shifts each of these slices up. And you can already hear, again, the sample becomes shorter because you pitch every sample up or every slice up, and then there's a gap between these onsets. 
And now I can again use a granular. To fill the space and you can also pretty much hear that Bit, uh, bitwig uses here for the slice method um, kind of an um, traditional pitch algorithm and so it basically speeds up when you change the pitch here it speeds up uh, these individual slices or samples um, like you used to in a sampler so um, if you don't like how all the other slicing modes uh, sound when you pitch it up um, this one is basically, or the slice mode is basically like sounding like a traditional uh, sampler pitch up and down, in my opinion. There's probably a lot of different things happening there, but for me it sounds like very traditional. So you pitch up and down these samples. Um, okay, so maybe put this back here to granular and maybe put the pitch down to zero. Okay. So now the problem is uh, some of these slices are or onsets, as you can see, are not exactly on point here. The snare drum is a bit earlier, it, used, it needs to be on 1-2, right? And 1-4 here needs to be also the snare, so it's a bit off and that's pretty normal because it's a drummer, a drummer played this in, so the drummers are usually not that precise, some drummers are. but. These are classic drum loops that are probably also recorded from a Rhinal record, which is not that precise and a bit, bit wonky here and there. So we can use here the stretch mode to put in some uh, stretch markers. So we can use here with a double click in the bottom half of this. Oh, it works also in the, in the top half. Okay. You can put in slice markers here at any point. Um, and then put these slice markers in, then move them around, right? And you can basically offset the whole um, audio clip or audio event. And then it tries to play this back in a different way. So you can stretch out different uh, individual sounds here. What you also can do is right click now with the new update and can say quantize audio here, quantize audio or quantize audio dot dot dot, which gives you a, an overlay like this. And in my opinion, this needs to move in in a different position because you don't see what's happening in the background here. Uh, maybe it's better to make this here movable, this window. I don't know. So what we can do now is here select some uh, on sets, we want to choose maybe these two, right? And then we want to use these two to actually quantize them to a uh, one eight note grid, which is straight. You can also choose your editor or maybe bring in some humanization, shuffle and so on. Uh, but we don't want to do that. So it's okay. And it uses these two markers here and put them exactly on the grid. If we redo this, you can see they are pretty much a bit off on the grid, off the grid. So this is what the audio quantization does. Um, so right click, audio, quantize audio here, and then you have that. So with this, with this you can easily quantize audio here. Maybe we can take all these onset markers, use 16 nodes, and then puts all these onsets on the grid. So now it sounds like this. Okay, so back to the arranger here. Uh, then we have on right click on this audio clip, we have also new normalize, which normalizes the audio file. It takes the biggest peak uh, and then puts it to zero dB uh, on the exactly on on yeah on the line of zero dB. And uh, what's also new is that it's not destructive, so it's not calculated into the wave file. It just changes here on the left side the gain setting. So right click, normalize, you can see it's now a 0 0.5. You can change the volume at any time and repeat that, right click, normalize. You can also define a hotkey for this, of course, in the settings, or you can select this, go here to clip, use normalize, 
or you can pin it to the main menu. This is what I did here. You can see now here this normalize button. So every time I select the audio file or audio clip, I have this button here. And then I hit this and can change the volume, normalize, change volume, normalize. So finally, after seven years, I'm quite emotional about this, that we have finally some normalization options for audio clips inside of Bitwig Studio. Uh, I could cry, to be honest. <laughs> Um, so back here in this detail editor, uh, we can also do something like now uh, slice in place and we can use onsets to slice actually this one big audio event into multiple audio events. We can also use here the threshold if we just want to select some of them slices, but I want to select all slices, so I hit OK. And now you can see instead of one audio event here, we have multiple audio events. And with this, you can select all these audio events and can say right click normalize or use here the normalize button, I think, event, pin it, yeah. Use normalize here. And you can see it now because we have multiple audio events, it takes each of these audio events separately and tries to normalize them, right? So it's not like one big file, uh, one big audio event and then take the biggest peak of that. No, now it takes each individual drum hit and normalizes this drum hit individually, separately. So here it makes no sense because these are kind of ghost notes, so they need to be a bit quiet so I can turn this down a bit here. And there you have it, a basically quantized BPM matched and normalized uh, classic drum break inside of Bitwig Studio with just Bitwig internal uh, features. Um, I'm quite happy about the normalization. Um, I was missing this a lot over the years and I'm finally happy we have this. This for me actually also one of the big features of this 5.1 update. Um, with the onset detection, I hope we get something like uh, that we can change the onset detection. Um, at the moment, it's automatically. So every time, like I said in the beginning, automatically when you drag in an audio file, it's all it's mapped out already um, that you have these onsets in place and you can't change it. What you can do is, of course, you can change it manually. So you can disable here by using a double click, right? or bring in additional ones. But in my opinion, there should be also a slider or threshold for this, maybe a low cut and a high cut also for the analyzing parts. So we can uh, move out certain clicks and pops from the, uh, from the file. Um, so these onsets don't get falsely detected with these uh, artifacts inside of a uh, WAV file. So this is my wish for the future to have some kind of threshold for that. Uh, normalization is great. Also here, um, the pop-ups, maybe make them movable in the future. So we can move this around or maybe make it on a different position, maybe on the right, right corner or something like that. I have no idea. So nice features all around in this new update. And that's it for this video. Leave a like if you like the video, subscribe to the channel and ask some questions in the comments below or tell me where I'm wrong. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video and bye.